Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hi, everybody. Tonight's guest is Marshall Huffman, frontman for Relentless Flood and touring bassist for Decipher Down. I hope you enjoy hearing about some upcoming events for both of these bands. Let's jump right in. Well, Mr. Marshall Huffman, what are you up to? Man, just working, working all the time. Um, We were very blessed and fortunate that my day job, it just, honestly, last year was one of the busiest years we've ever had. I work for a company that does high-end audio visual tech network, any, anything to do with tech in like uh, resort homes type things. And then some businesses. So um, we have a lot of people with second homes that you know, have moved up from Florida or, or moved down from New York, places like that. And we do some pretty big systems in their homes and put in church PA systems in all kinds of stuff like that. Keeps me busy. Very good. So you're doing that, but then you've got, of course, Relentless Flood, and then uh-huh. you've got a lot of other stuff going on. But let's start with Relentless Flood. Tell me how it got started. I started it. Yep. Well, so Relentless Flood played its first show in February of 2010. Okay. Um, and you were like, what? 15? <laughs> no, no, I was, uh, I was 18. Okay. Yeah. You know, I had just turned 18 at the time when we played that first show. I think it was my birthday weekend. In fact, um, kind of a funny story how it happened. I didn't have a band. I had, uh, gathered up some friends and I was a huge, huge Skilla fan at the time. Mm-hmm. Skilla, Disciple, Decipher Down, you know, I was just Massive fan of any of that stuff. And I was helping on the tech side for a talent show at school. And there were a bunch of these bands. And I just had the thought, man, I'd love to get a couple of guys together here at school and do a skillet song or something like that. So mm-hmm. I did. I was able to get them together and we ended up kind of making a band. And it turned out I, I started out just like singing and playing the rhythm guitar like I do now mm-hmm. um, because I knew way more I myself was a drummer by trade, but I knew way more drummers than I did anything else. So (laughs) I was like, okay, well, I'll sing, play guitar, you know, do that. And then that drummer quit. So I was like, well, I guess I could play drums and sing. So Mm -hmm. I moved to that and the rest of that part's history. Stayed like that for about uh, six years, I think. The first six years of the band, yeah, I was on drums, and then I finally moved moved back the other way. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the quick version of how it got started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, tell us a little bit because y- your sound is a little bit of everything, isn't it? Like rock, metal, progressive yeah. rock, uh, <laughs> and then you got beautiful melodic sounds to it, but yet you've got that little metal screaming edge on there, and <laughs> you can do it all, man. You can do it all. Oh, thank you. It's a it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm sure every musician goes through this or every band goes through this, but you get to a point to where you're, you listen back to the first stuff, and it's cool to listen to, but you're like, oh, that doesn't sound anything like us now. I wish it wasn't out there kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not really, but it's just Can we like hide that. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, don't go listen to that. Go listen to our new stuff. Of course, you know, there's always going to be those old schoolers going to say, like, oh, back in the good old days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're, you're always growing. You're always changing, and, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And- no, not at all. And you know, it's it's certainly been a progression over time. I mean, shoot, like when when we first started, I hadn't been singing, but for maybe like two years, I wasn't one of these people. I didn't sing from the time I was like five. I, I was playing music from the time I was like five, but I didn't. I find that hard to believe because you've got a gorgeous voice. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I didn't start singing until I was about sixteen, actually. Singing out in public, I'll put it that way. I sang all the time, just in the car and stuff. But there's been so many things that have evolved with the sound over Mm -hmm. time. And I would say my voice is one of them because when we started, it didn't matter how hard I tried. I couldn't make my voice have any kind of like an edge to it at all. Like it was just a, a just a really mellow thing, and I was kind of self conscious about that actually. <laughs> but that's evolved, and you know my my taste in music has evolved over time a little bit, and that's kind of led to some of the more like progressive elements being thrown in and weird time signatures and stuff. Speaking of that, the new single that's coming out is going to have a little of that, so just hold on to your hats. So okay, <laughs> all right, we'll put that on the back burner for a minute. Yeah, put that we'll on the back burner. We'll, we'll get back to that later. That in but... a second, yeah. <laughs> so but yeah. Yeah, so you're changing and you're growing, and there's been such a huge difference in 10 years in Christian music and yeah. contemporary Christian as well as the rock. And uh, so I, I enjoy stuff from every era. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people ask about influences all the time. And that's kind of a tough one because I was one of these kids that I I was kind of like sold out to one band at Mm -hmm. a time. You know, I didn't like listen to a bunch, like a super diverse range of things. I have like Journey's entire discography. I was a massive Journey fan in Alabama. Oddly enough, mm-hmm. I grew yep. up, I cut my teeth on Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, my first introduction to like Christian rock was uh, Milo Lefevre and Broken Heart. Oh, yes. Yeah, dad had a tape. Had a VHS tape of a live concert of them. And there is a picture in my parents' house of me standing in the living room in front of that TV set while that concert's on. And I have like a, I was three years old and I had a plastic toy guitar. And I had my hat turned backwards and I was just rocking out. That was my favorite thing to do was to watch that concert and, and play music along with it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you uh, maybe a little connection. You may not know that Mylon Lefevre and Jerome Olds were best buds back in the day uh, in the 80s and 90s in Atlanta. And Jerome Olds is the daddy of the Family Force Five guys. Oh, OK. No, I did okay. not know that. Jerome had a lot of big hits back in the day. And one of the songs he wrote was Trains Up in the Sky. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so he wrote songs for Mylon. So there you go. Yeah, but I didn't know about that. Uh, my mom and dad, they used to go see Mylon. Mm-hmm. They used to come through our area a decent amount. I, I know they went to see him two or three different times. So, Who is Relentless Flood? Dylan McLean. He is our drummer. Drummer mm-hmm. extraordinaire. I call mm-hmm. him Jim Bay the Silverback. Oh, my he just, goodness. He just destroys some drums. He's one of my best friends. And he also, for those of you who saw, I'm sure he played guitar for us on the Disciple Love Letter Kill Shot Tour. Um, we've just, <laughs> we've got a band of multi-instrumentalists. So, um, so yes, it's Dylan McLean, uh, myself. I am doing the lead vocal duties and guitar right now. And now Donovan Royball is an official member of Relentless Flip. So, yeah. Good choice. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the man. A really, really good fit. We all get along really, really well. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this year. I was really excited about last year too. Um, <laughs> we, we came off of a year in 2019 with some awesome momentum, getting the tour with Disciple and everything, and we had this really cool tour planned with the Protest and the Persuaded for spring of 2020. And you know that was right when COVID hit, mm-hmm. and you know that just kind of put a damper on the situation for me that we didn't get to do that. But yeah. anyway. Hey, it's a new year. The Lord's good. He's faithful. And I'm, I'm seeing some opportunities start to roll in. And, you know, I'm just ready to get back to doing doing what we do. <laughs> so, so it's you three. Yep. Well, that's good to know. Sometimes it, it's fluid, especially these times when people can't play full time. They've got to do other things. And sometimes it just happens, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's one of those things. It seems like there's so many bands now, including us, <laughs> that <laughs> Mm-hmm. You you go see them live and, you know, you've got the couple of core members, but you don't know who's going to be playing guitar on this tour. or You know what I mean? It's it's an that's one thing, thing that's neat about the, the Christian rock industry. I've noticed yeah. is you guys are just interchangeable. You, you, we all love like, each other. It's, I know it's a big it. It's family. A, it, it is. It's a big family. And it's like, yeah. hey. You play guitar. Hey, how about if you play bass? Hey, why don't you? And everybody just jumps right in there and does it. I love it. Oh, right. Man. Yeah, I, I do, too. And, you know, it's kind of like the whole thing. The last few shows that I played for Decipher Down, we have a text thread that's called Relentless Downfall because <laughs> it's members of Decipher Down, Relentless Flood and Set for the Fall. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just it's just fun. I, you know, everybody's so close. There's these like April 16 dates popping up all over your social media. Yep. I've seen a teaser video with uh-huh. you and Josiah Prince at the ranch studio. Yep. So, all right, spill the beans. What's happening? All right, spilling the beans now. So we are dropping a new single April 16th. The first single we have released since October 4th, 2019. It's just one of those things with last year. We had big plans. We we had planned to do at least three or four singles last year and just life, work, everything. It just kind of, you know, messed it up. Wasn't the right time. We'll just say that. Yeah. Um, but April 16th, we were rolling out a new single. We haven't actually released the title of it on our on our socials yet, but that's fine. I will do it um, for your listeners. It's called mm-hmm. Reign of Terror is the new song. And that's one that we co-wrote with Josiah Prince. Um, at the ranch, you guys know him very well from Disciple, and an extremely good friend of ours. Every time that I'm with Josiah Prince, he lights up my day. Um, he's just an awesome person. He is. Um, also, he produced it. We we tracked there with him. 
Um, and we're, we're really excited about it. It's on the heavier side, so it definitely still sounds like Relentless Flood. It's got some cool different elements in it, like progressive type elements, and it's definitely pushing the boundaries with a bunch of stuff, I would say from what we've put out. So I'm really excited for all of you guys to hear it. Okay, that is awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. No problem. You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. We really mean rock. The music I like. Solid Rock Radio. Skillet. It's resistance. You can't resist us. Red. Love and death. Love and death. Lacey Stern. Tell me, how has the pandemic inspired you? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I got to think about that. I mean, because, wow. Um, we all know how it yeah, formed us out, absolutely. but how has it yeah. inspired you? <laughs> wow. Okay. It's inspired me in a few different ways, I would say. It pushed me to rely more heavily on the Lord for my source of joy and inspiration. When the rug kind of gets jerked out from under you on a few things, we think we have it all together and we think that we're putting all of our trust and hope where we're supposed to. But then when these things that we are so used to and these things that we feed off of get jerked out from under our feet for a little bit, we're like, oh, I'm totally lost. I feel, you know, I feel like so out of sorts. So it really forced me to reevaluate and put into practice the things that we preach, that we talk about, you know, and Mm -hmm. I would call that an inspiration. It inspired me to dig my roots deeper. I'll tell you, there are some things that went on. I know it it has kind of gone on all over, but specifically in our area. Um, This is just a cool story, but I, I saw something really cool over the last summer that inspired me. So for those of you who don't know, I am also a worship leader and youth pastor at my church here in uh, a little tiny community called Plum Tree, North Carolina. That's where the church is. And the, we have a big kind of network of, of youth pastors. They're all fairly small churches. None of the churches are over probably 100 members. Um, some of the youth pastors, we got together and we had this vision about doing a big outreach for everybody because none of the youth groups got to go do their normal summer camps and stuff. So we were like, well, let's do these. Let's do some of these services where um, we do like games like they would have had at summer camp, you know, like socially distanced and everything, of course, to the best of our ability. And we had worship services. So it was supposed to be two weeks, Cindy, <laughs> but it went 18 weeks. There's no other way to explain it. It was absolute, pure, unadulterated revival in its rawest form, the way the Spirit of God was moving in those services every week. And we're actually still doing them once a month now. But you had youth groups from every denomination, like we had Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals, everybody together. And you had youth from ages 13 all the way up, you know, and you had their parents sometimes in the back. We had some very extended times of worship that were not forced. And you have these kids, you know, kids have a short attention span these days, it seems like. Yeah. And it's funny to hear me saying that because it makes me sound like an old man. But <laughs> kids these days, um, anyway. Oh, whippersnappers. Yeah, these whippersnappers, you know, with their phones and stuff. And it's just instant gratification with stuff like that. But to see a room full of teenagers from all different denominations fully engaged and sold out in worship, it blessed my heart so much. And to see that week after week after week, it gave me so much renewed hope for this upcoming generation. So that, that inspired me more than anything this year. Seeing that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's a a wonderful story. And boy, we could all use as much hope as we can get. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I saw something else that just popped up in the last couple of days. And maybe that's why I thought of you. 2021 first tour. Yeah, yeah, guess first, what? It's near me. Yes, yes. And you know what? Even though it's only a couple of dates, I, yeah, let's just call it a tour because it, yeah. It, it, yeah, because it's the closest thing we've had to one in a while. So I call it a tour because it's more than one band and exactly. more than one place. That's it's it. More than right one there. band and in more than one place. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it's actually going to be May 7th and 8th. The 7th is the one in particular that you're talking about, which is in uh-huh. Douglas, Georgia. That lineup. That's going to be a pretty full night because we have Jenna Parr opening up the night. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, yeah, then us. Right. The protest. Yes. The protest. And the down. Yep. Oh, man, I, I'm so excited about this. Uh, we'll have full lights and production just bringing our whole rig down. It's going to be awesome. And then that Saturday, May 8th, 
the whole thing is going to be in, I think this is right, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Yeah. There's a show going on there. I I haven't seen the announcements from them yet, but the show is confirmed for sure. It is going to be like a hybrid in-person slash live stream concert event. So they have in-person tickets and right. live stream tickets. And Joel Burris, who you know very well, oh, yeah. is doing the live stream part. He's The man. He's, Yep, he is going to kill it, I know. And that's going to be the same thing, Decipher Down, the protest, and us. Hey, is there enough room on the uh, Decipher Down bus? <laughs> there should be this time, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. That is amazing. I am so excited for that. Dude. So on this tour, you are double dutying it, at yep. least with DD now. Are you doing any play for anybody else? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'll just... Just I will checking. just be playing for uh, Decipher Down and, and RF on this tour. So Okay. So you guys will have your set. You'll be playing the new song, hopefully. Yes. We are going to plan to play the new song. I'll put it that way. <laughs> we will play. Yes, we will. And you know in what's funny form. about that? Yeah, in some form. Do you – I know you remember because, of course, of course, you would remember this. The last time that you saw us, which is the last time that we played, um, <laughs> we played a new song that night. Yes, I remember that. But it's not that one. Okay. <laughs> it's a different one. That one's coming out later. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that was the time you were you came to the house, right? No, no. Was that, um, the, that was the time before that. Yeah, that was the I'm time confused. before that. This was okay. with the protest and the persuaded, and we were That's in, right. Yeah, down there at um. Down in South Georgia, Adel. Adel. Yep. Okay. Adel. It was yep. the one before that where you came with Decipher down to the house. Ex- exactly. Yep. That oh, was actually yeah. 2018, I think. Oh my gosh, where yeah. is time gone? <laughs> it, it flies. It absolutely. That was flies. a blast. I loved having you guys at the house. Oh, that was fun. You're you're an amazing host. So I, I think I got blessed more. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be doing uh, bass for them. Uh huh. Yep, I will be doing bass for them on on this run too. Yeah, I've been doing tour bass for them since I guess it was May of 2018. How did that come about? I think I talked about it a little bit when I had TJ on here. That's one of those things that I can sit here right now. And I can look back at all the little things that lined up to get me where I'm at as far as with relationships, you know, and people that I know now. And just thinking about, especially like, you know, doing the tours with Disciple Down and doing them with Disciple and thinking about me as a 16 year old kid. If I could right now tell myself as a 16 year old kid, like, you're going to be doing this. I don't know what I would have done. I would have, I wouldn't have been able to contain myself because you have lost I was, a, yeah, I was a huge, Huge fan. Yeah, I, I remember one of my favorite shows that I remember going to see when I was a high schooler. It was it was one of Skillet's comatose tours, I think. I don't remember if it was comatose because it was, you know, Decipher Down, Disciple, Skillet. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was comatose tour. Good old days. Oh, yeah, the good old days. It was awesome. It, <laughs> I think it was one of TJ's first tours because I didn't even know they had changed singers yet. Crash had just come out. Caleb had recorded the vocals, and since he left, they had to come back in and have TJ sing everything and redo yeah. it. And yes. <laughs> that was his first tour. Uh-huh. I, I have an autographed copy that I got that night. I think we were in Tennessee when we got it. Probably the same show then because I saw it in Knoxville. Yeah, so, <laughs> so basically, it all... Honestly, all, all these opportunities I can trace back to just and becoming friends with TJ. TJ is TJ is such a good friend of mine. You know, we've just we've gotten to hang out so much and become such close friends. Um, he's such a good guy. He's as good of a guy as you think he is. I promise. <laughs> Wholeheartedly yeah. agree. The nicest yeah. guy you could you could know. My wife and I we weren't married yet. Um, we went to see an acoustic show of his back in 2014 um, in Lenore, North Carolina. I had a friend that had brought him into his church. So naturally, after the show, he introduced me and we just got to talking. And you and I both know how much TJ likes to talk. So we <laughs> and I I do, too. I, I could talk. I could talk to a brick wall. So we stood out in the parking lot of that church in Lenore. And I think it was probably like mid 40s. It wasn't it was not very warm. We stood out there and all talked. It was me, uh, my wife, TJ and Nancy stood out there and talked for two hours, just nonstop about anything that you could think of. And I found out the town that he was from. And that's also where at the time we were recording and we were in the middle of recording our album. The time is now. And I just had a thought. I was like, hey, would you come do a feature on one of our songs? Not even like honestly imagining that he would say yes. He was like, yeah, sure. That sounds fun. So (laughs) after that, you know, we just stayed in touch and. You know, you've seen his country band, 
Right. Mm-hmm. You, you came and saw us, I think. When we drove right. up to Knoxville for the very first country show, yeah. Yes, yes, you did. That's right. So the way that the Cypher Down opportunity came about is because he was starting the country project. And I was like, hey, man, if you need a bass player or something, just let me know. You know, I was like, man, I just love to play music with you somehow. So I started going and practicing with that. And subsequently, maybe like in a month or two later is when Chris had to step down. So he asked me if I wanted to do the decipher down thing, too. I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's really how that came about. And, you know, that fall, decipher down went on tour with Disciple. So I got to meet all those guys. And it's like I gained an extended family through mm-hmm. those guys. <laughs> They're yeah. all so awesome. And, you know, then that led to the next fall, Relentless Slug Guts Tour with Disciple. It, it's all about relationships, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't matter, Cindy, if I couldn't play another show for the rest of my life. The relationships that have been made through this whole process are worth it all. Because mm-hmm. I would still have those, you know? I've just made such good friends through all this and just met some some great people along great the way. Great memories. Yes. Yeah, so changed a lot memories. of lives. It's been so so awesome. And I can't, I just can't wait to see what's ahead as well. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Our performance service family is a solid rock radio business ministry partner who offers turnkey e-commerce website design, marketing, and converged technology consulting online at outperformancemarketing.com. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. Well, tell me one of your favorite road stories. It could be Ooh. funny or inspirational. We, we're good here. All right. All right. One of my favorite road stories. <laughs> this makes me laugh just even thinking about it. So any of you, any of you that know the band, Dylan, our, our drummer, Dylan, Dylan is a massive dude. Like just he, he just looks like he could beat beat just about anybody up. He's just he's just a massive looking dude. <laughs> when we were on tour with Disciple, we were we were all up in the front lounge after a show one night, and Kevin was like, "Man," he said, "Your neck," he said, "It's just so so massive." Kevin got out a tape measure and had Dylan measure his neck, and then he measured Dylan's neck so they they could compare neck sizes. Kevin is skinny as a rail, man. <laughs> I don't know why, but that that was just oh man, that was hilarious. What kind of a power um, move was that? I don't know. It was just <laughs> another one that was more, I guess, more inspirational. I would say one of my favorite memories for many of the road experiences. It was also on that 2019 the fall uh, disciple tour. We were actually co-writing a song with Josiah at that time. It's not this one. It's it's a different one that will come out at some point. I just remember we were. In San Diego, we had some lawn chairs out in front of the bus, and we were just sitting around with acoustic guitars, just kind of working through the details of the song, singing it. And, you know, I have a bunch of nostalgia just thinking when I listen to the finished version of that song as it is now, it brings back all those memories about that tour. And I just remember sitting out there. It was a beautiful, clear night. We were just all having so much fun and singing and just writing music together, just I, I don't know. That moment right there was one of my favorites. Sometimes I'll be listening to a, a song or something, and and I think back of being with a person that's in the band and s- something that we did together or whatever, or something that they said, and I'll just start yes. laughing. Or it's, and it's also a good opportunity. Whenever I hear y'all's songs, I'm thinking of you, and then I pray for you guys. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's that's so cool. Now that we're speaking about roads and traveling and touring, one of the features I always put on my show, if I haven't interviewed you yet, is what are your favorite road snacks? Ooh, road snacks. Okay. Beef jerky is always an incredible road snack. I'll tell you an obscure one I always keep around. Have you ever seen the RX bars? I think so. They're kind of more of like a health food item, but they're like a they're like this little bar. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like a little, this bar. little bar. And I'm trying to think of how to describe it. Well, I buy a lot of health bars. You know, there's the uh, Lar bars, Cliff yeah, bars. Kind of like that. RX bars are my favorite, though. I really like them. You know, I'm not a picky person, Cindy. I'm really not. <laughs> I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. The cereal. Yeah, the cereal. Absolutely. Yeah, the, cereal. the band's in their cereal. People don't realize this, that you guys live on cereal. We do. <laughs> We live on cereal. Dry time. or wet. You know what? <laughs> there is no bad time of the day when you're on the road for cereal. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's that's my favorite cereal. Yep. It's good Great in snack. a bowl with milk or it's good just by itself. There you go. <laughs> 
Before we go, is there anything I didn't ask you about that you would like to share? I don't know if you've seen it, the Contagion Fest. Yes. Um, we'll be a part of that. We will be Saturday. Mm-hmm. On Saturday. Okay. GFM hey, and the nice. Letter Black headlining. It's exciting. We we just did an acoustic set last year, um, but this mm-hmm. year we're going to do an electric thing. It's and it's, it's going to be cool. We're we're going to kind of try this out and hopefully do some more video content like this. But we're planning to do it as like a kind of studio session mm-hmm. kind of feel or look. Yeah. You know, I'm um, just us all in in the studio together and it should be fun. Very nice. Are there any other festivals? That's the only things announced so far. Okay. I'll put it that way. But yeah, there are definitely some more in the works. All right. Any prayer requests? Yeah, the tour coming up just for for safety and for boldness for all the bands and just opportunities to share the love of Christ, you know, one on one, anything like that for us specifically, especially Dylan and I. Wisdom with our time management. And I know we're not alone in this. So I know a lot of bands, if you're listening, you can totally relate to this. But when you're trying to tour and get stuff going and then, you know, you've also got your family and a full time job, sometimes time management becomes a stress factor. And some people are just better at it than others. I've learned over time that I'm not good at it. I'm not a good time management person. And when I feel like I'm behind on things, I just get so stressed and anxious and that's not how I like to feel going into a tour, you know, mm-hmm. um, stuff. So prayers for, for wisdom with time management. Yeah. And just mm-hmm. prayers of safety over our families as we're gone. Okay. And so we will lift those things up. All right. I'm going to let you go. So man, thank you for talking with me tonight. No I've problem. Missed you. You. I've missed you too. It was, it was awesome to get to see you at that, that show in October last year, you know, getting to see everybody is such like a sense of normalcy. You know what yeah. I mean? So yes. I look forward to, to these shows in May for sure. See you soon. Thank you so right. much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening tonight. Stay tuned for more great music all night long. Be sure to check out my I'm with Mothership Facebook page and Solid Rock Radio's website. Follow the link under Shows to Backstage with Mothership, which will have the links to my guests' social media accounts. This show will be replayed at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Past interviews available on podcast.solidrockradio.org, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on Pandora platforms. And remember this week, be kind to one another.